Hello everyone, I am Anuj Nakade and welcome to Live Law. We bring you very significant developments in the Madras High Court about the V. Senthil Balaji case and his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate or the ED in the Cash for Jobs scam. As our regular audiences might know, Mr. V. Senthil Balaji, the Electricity Minister and the Prohibition and Excise Minister of Tamil Nadu with the present Dravida Munnetra Karagam or the DMK regime was implicated in a corruption scandal. It has been alleged that during his tenure as the transport minister under the All Indian Anna Dravida Munnetra Karagam or the AIA DMK administration in the state, a cash for job scam occurred in 2014 with him being complicit. An investigation was launched against Mr. Balaji in 2018 under several sections of the Indian Penal Code for cheating and criminal intimidation along with the Prevention of Corruption Act. Soon after, the Enforcement Directorate launched an investigation in a money laundering case in relation to the cash for jobs scam. The Madras High Court in November last year had ordered a fresh inquiry into the scam observing that there were irregularities. The court had also dismissed a discharge petition by the minister noting that there was enough material for framing of charges and that the case impacts society. The Supreme Court, however, set aside the High Court's order and also set aside a direction of the High Court staying the ED's proceedings. The minister was then arrested by the Enforcement Directorate in June of this year and was immediately taken to a hospital for health concerns. Senthil Balaji's wife, Meghala, had filed a habeas corpus petition against his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate on June 14th in the Madras High Court. The High Court had denied him interim bail but allowed the minister to be shifted to Kaveri Hospital for treatment. ED then approached the Supreme Court, challenging the maintainability of the petition and also challenged the Madras High Court's decision to allow shifting him to a private hospital. The Supreme Court, however, refused to interfere with the matter until the Madras High Court had heard the matter. It is worth noting that the counsel appearing for Meghala and V. Senthil Balaji's family informed the court that he had undergone bypass surgery. If you would like to know more about the cash for job scam or the previous proceedings in this matter in the Madras High Court and the Supreme Court, we will leave a link in the description to our previous videos where you can find more details about the hearings in this case. It is pertinent to mention that Mr. Balaji was initially sent to judicial custody and ED had sought the change in the nature of custody. ED then approached a Sessions Court judge in Chennai to seek police custody. Senior counsels N.R. Ilango and Mukul Rotagi, appearing for Meghala, argued before the High Court that ED had violated Balaji's fundamental and statutory rights. Their submission was that the ED was in violation of Section 41 of the Code of Criminal Procedure and Article 22 of the Constitution. The family contended that the remand order passed by the Principal Session Court in Chennai was a mechanical one and so, the habeas corpus petition was maintainable. It was also submitted that the ED was bound to follow procedural laws as per the decisions of the Supreme Court. It was also argued before this bench that the Prevention of Money Laundering Act did not give ED the power to seek police custody at all. Section 24 of the PMLA only grants custody for 24 hours and in that regard, the order of the Sessions Court granting 8 days custody was also improper. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta, along with additional Solicitor General A.R.L. Sundaresan and Special Prosecutor N. Ramesh argued against the maintainability of the habeas corpus petition. ED's argument was that if the trial court had not held the custody to be illegal, the High Court could not interfere in the order by way of a habeas corpus petition. It was argued that though the executive actions can be challenged when they take away fundamental rights, in this case, the Sessions Court, after all consideration of the matter, had passed the orders. The ED argued that they had served a panchnama which the minister refused to accept. The ED also argued that even the Sessions judge had informed Balaji about the reasons for his arrest before passing the remand order, which was on the same day. So, the petitioners cannot claim that grounds for the arrest were never communicated to him during arrest. The ED had also sought for exclusion of the period of treatment while calculating the period for custodial interrogation on the ground that ED could not interrogate Balaji during this period. To this, Balaji's family had contended that there was no legal provision for the same and that once the period of 15 days is over, it could not be extended in any event. 
The two judge bench of Justice Nisha Banu and Justice Bharata Chakravarti heard both sides and on 4th of July delivered a split verdict in the habeas corpus case. Justice Nisha Banu observed that the habeas corpus petition is maintainable and that the enforcement directorate is not entrusted with the powers to seek police custody under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. She also dismissed the application filed by the enforcement directorate seeking to exclude the period of treatment undergone by Balaji while calculating the period for custodial interrogation. Differing from this opinion, Justice Bharata Chakravarti held that habeas corpus petition is not maintainable. He observed that normally habeas corpus is not maintainable unless it is shown that the arrest and detention is illegal. According to him, in the present case, the petitioner had not made out a case to hold that the remand was illegal. Justice Chakravarti also observed that it was in the interest of the detainee that he had not been in ED's custody for even a day as he has been undergoing treatment from the day of arrest. So, he ordered that the period from June 14th to the date of when he is discharged from the hospital shall be excluded. The bench has now placed the matter before the Chief Justice of the Madras High Court for further orders. That's all we have for you in this video. Hope you found this video informative. Please let us know in the comments how we can shape our content to bring you your legal news in more engaging ways and don't forget to leave a like. We also will leave a link down in the description to the full article and the judgment for your reference. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Thank you.